Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well today. We are still at stay-at-home status here in Washington State, and we are going to be at home for the next month at least, so just trying to find more things to do and ways to spend the weekends. Um, I've got this book here called Essential Monet. It's actually one of my parents' books, and I thought it might be fun to look at it. Um, my camera battery is low, so we'll see how far we get, and if there's a a sudden end, uh, that's the reason. But yeah, we've had this book for years. I think we probably got it at Costco or something like that. And it just has like his best paintings. Uh, when I was a child, Monet was one of my favorite painters. And I, for years, would get wall calendars with his paintings. I'm very familiar with his more famous works. Um, I'm not actually that familiar with his life. Um, it says he was born in 1840 in Paris. Um, by no means, he, he was not the only Impressionist painter. There were many others, but he's one of the most, one of the most famous. Very much prolific throughout the mid and late 1800s. And he was very famous in particular for his paintings of his garden. So hopefully we'll see some of that in here. And I'm sorry about the glare. I have a skylight, so the lighting is not always ideal. So these are some of his earlier paintings. Not, not really the color tones I would associate with his more famous stuff. Although I guess this is pretty, pretty well known. Um... Let's keep going here. Okay, so here's one that I really like. This was one of the pictures in one of my calendars. A lot of boats in the harbor. I really like the colors in this one, that kind of greenish blue water and the red flowers and the flag all stand out very nicely. Here's a nice one of a gal reading a book. The Lover of Reading, 1872. This painting was unusual in its time for posing the woman outdoors. This later became a common practice, but at the time, it added to the originality of the painting. I just love the light and shadows in this picture. It's just beautiful. I do not remember seeing this one before. This is a scene in Paris. Yeah, that's that one's new to me. I don't remember that one from any calendar. I like, I guess these are balloons. I'm not really sure what that is. I really like that though. It's very cool. It kind of reminds me of a scene from Mary Poppins. Here's a really famous painting. Poppy Field. Now... There's a really good video on YouTube about Monet by a YouTuber called The French Whisperer. And I'll probably link to him in the description, but he talks about this painting and how you can view the woman and the child in the foreground and the background as either two groups of people or the same group of people as they travel from the top of the poppy field to the bottom. I'd honestly never thought of that before, but it's it's kind of neat. There's some industrial paintings. The Japanese woman. This is kind of an interesting one because it's a little more detailed than a lot of his paintings. And then you've got kind of the two figures in here, the woman, and then the figure on her gown, 1875. A corner of the apartment, that one's kind of a sad painting, a little boy in a dark apartment looking out. Don't know if you can see that. <laughs> 
painting of social distancing. <laughs> okay, well, more people in fields. Ooh, I don't think I've ever seen this one before. The turkeys. That's cool. This one's a really good example of Impressionism because if you look at it very closely, it really is just a bunch of blotches of color. But if you zoom out more, you can really see the apple trees. It's really neat. Ooh, that's a cool one. Street Fair, June 30th, 1878. That is, that's amazing. He's really captured the emotion of that moment, right? The wind and the, the movement of the people. This kind of scene really suits itself to Impressionism. Or vice, ver vice versa. <laughs> this was Monet's second son. At the time of this portrait, he was two years old. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna try to finish this off with my phone camera. Didn't have a lot of success with that in my painted veil video, but let's just let's just see what happens. Yes, uh, Jean Monet, probably the first son. Pretty detailed portrait. Um, let's see. Hmm. Now that's one I don't think I've ever seen before. Path Through the Corn at Porvie. I don't know if that's how you say it. Um, I love the colors in this. It's just beautiful. By using strong colors that contrast with each other rather than blend together, he achieves the effect of each color appearing even stronger. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Ooh. That's cool. Most of Monet's paintings from this period were created from the top of the cliffs looking down or along, but here he has broken that precedent and chosen to paint the cliffs at their base and face on. Yeah. Very surreal looking. Very cool. Oh, I like that quite a bit. I love pictures with trees, especially twisty trees. <laughs> yeah. Here's a famous painting. I've always thought this painting was a little spooky because you really can't see her face at all. I like this a lot. It has a very modern crop, for lack of a better word. Composition, that's better. Um, just the trees taking up this entire space. There's almost no negative space. Oh, so that's water. By painting a foreground of water, Monet creates a sensation for viewers that they are floating in the middle of the river. This has been described as a duck's eye perspective. That's cool. I never noticed there was water there. Here's one I like. Water Lily Pond, Harmony in Green with his Japanese bridge. I actually have a little version of this. Let me go get it. Someone put this up for sale at the church rummage sale years ago. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of got a little bit of a, I don't know what to call that effect, but you know what I mean. Waterloo Bridge, 1902. I'm not really seeing the bridge. I mean, Maybe this is it right here. I do like the colors though. His water lilies. He painted a lot of water lilies. Prime Minister Cl 
Clemenceau had always been a loyal supporter of Monet's work. In 1914, he urged the artist to work on a larger project, which became a formal state commission in 1916. This was for a set of large canvases depicting water lilies that would be displayed together permanently. Between now and his death, this was to be the main preoccupation of Monet's work. Hmm. I did not know that that was a state commission. That's cool. During the course of this painting, Monet's cataracts were getting progressively worse. He could see so badly that he had to read the names on the tubes of paint to find out which colors he was using. Wow. I think this one probably looks better in the camera than it does on the page. Here's another Japanese bridge. I can't really see it too well. I guess it's like right here, huh? Mm, that's pretty. Well, I guess that's about it, huh? The roses. The roses has an obvious oriental influence. The tree is painted against a blue background that could represent the sky, although it is so anonymous it would be difficult to state that for certain. Hmm. Yeah, that's really pretty. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I, I sure did. I'm a huge fan of Monet, and I feel like his pictures have universal appeal in the way that he combined Western and Eastern art and, you know, his colors have so much emotion in them, and yet you can still interpret the subject matter to a certain degree on your own, so... Um, thanks for watching. I hope you all are staying well. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.